Hi, I'm Doug, and this is my earth-sheltered passive solar home my wife and I designed and built starting in 1982. We moved in in 1985. It has uh, solar hot water. That's a 40 square foot solar thermal panel on the roof with a 10 watt photovoltaic panel that makes electricity to drive a circulator pump. It circulates a non-toxic antifreeze through the collector down into a uh, water tank to heat our domestic water. This is a solar oven. It's like a slow cooker. We can cook beans and potatoes and we can bake in it. I've seen it up over 375 degrees. And uh, I usually take it to places and do uh, demonstrations. I make cookies with it for Earth Day tomorrow. I'm taking it to uh, uh, Tennessee State University at Murfreesboro and uh, gonna uh, bake oatmeal cookies. This is our busy season with the greenhouse, so you'll have to excuse the mess, but come on in. This is a mud room with an airlock with two doors so that in the winter time you can close it, uh, one door before you open the next one and you don't let the cold air in. It's also a great place for coats and boots and such. This is a direct gain passive solar home. Direct gain means that essentially we live in a solar collector with all these large windows face south so that the low winter sun enters the windows and uh, goes all the way to the back of the building during the winter but doesn't come in to the windows at all in the summertime because the overhangs keep it out. The dark stained concrete floor absorbs the sunlight uh, in the winter time when it's on it and gives it back to you at night. We've had we had a five degree night this uh, February and we didn't have any backup heat in here whatsoever. It was 67 degrees in the morning. Uh, this is our only backup heat is a, a large stone fireplace. It's really a masonry stove technically in that it's an airtight firebox has an outside air intake and uh, also uh, heats water for us. I've got 30 feet of soft copper tubing wound around the stack coming out of it and it, uh, whenever there's a fire going, will just warm that water which will rise naturally to the solar tank that's above it, uh, up in the attic. Uh, this house is earth sheltered, meaning that it's, there's no soil on the roof, but there's soil behind the back wall. I call it basement technology. It's essentially like a walkout basement, except you have your insulation on the outside of the stone walls so that all that stone is called thermal mass. It gets heated by the sun uh, during the day and it holds that heat. So this is very temperature stable in here. I'm sure it's up over 80 degrees out there right now. And uh, as you walk in, you can feel how much cooler it is because it stays a certain temperature. Even with doors and windows open, the temperature is just uh, stable in here. It's very pleasant. Did you talk about the uh Slip forming? Is that what it's called? Uh, uh, the slip form walls are the stone walls, and uh, they're an old. It's an old method of uh, building that uses uh, removable, reusable forms. And uh, all this local stone uh, came from within four or five miles of the area. We picked up for free from roadsides and, and creek bottoms. Uh, you, you just, I have 18, I built 18 inch tall forms, they were four, six, or eight feet long. They're drilled on two foot centers so you can bolt them all together. You set two forms facing each other, the width of the wall you want. You take a flat stone, you put it up against one form, and then you pour concrete in behind it. You just keep going until the form is filled. When that's set up, you can bolt another form on top of it, do the same thing. Well, once that second layer of forms is set up, you can pull that lower layer and leapfrog the form up over the top one because the forms are wired together through the wall. So that's thus the name slip forming. You can slip one form out and, and reuse it and that way you work up and along the wall using the same form lumber over and over again. This rear wall is 16 inches thick. It's uh, buried seven feet in the ground. You can actually walk around behind the house and step up on the roof. Because we're in earth contact, there is two inches of insulation behind the wall. There's none under the slab. But uh, as you know, earth temperatures stay very stable year round. So that uh, in the winter, it's warmer by being in contact with the earth than, in the, than the air. 
and in the summer it keeps you cooler. Um, I've seen it 110 degrees in the shade here, and I've seen it 10 below zero here in the 25 years we've been here. And uh, the earth temperature is always stable around 60 degrees around here. Hmm. Depending on how deep you go. What about the, um, the, the wooden walls in the front? This is cedar cordwood. These are 16 inch long blocks of uh, eastern red cedar, juniper, uh, which I cut locally. And uh, each block is laid in a, a mortar bed that's about three or four inches thick on both ends of the block so that you don't have a continuous mortar bond through the wall. You've got a gap in between the two walls of mortar and I stuffed that with insulation, fiberglass or styrofoam, whatever I had. It's a real inexpensive wall to build, it's attractive, but uh, the problem is the uh, mortar does not move with uh, humidity changes while wood does, so you get a little bit of shrinkage around the wood and uh, lead infiltration, so I just covered the outside of it with uh, insulation and uh, stucco. It's also an old building method. That was for poor people who couldn't afford long straight trees they could cut shorter sections of, oh. of wood and uh, build with them that way instead of building a typical log cabin Interesting. it's a poor man's log uh, building method and this is all post and beam frame and these are oak post and beams I used a chainsaw to rip uh, to fell and uh, rip them uh, right here on the property and used a horse to uh, drag them down to the building site a rather uncooperative horse actually <laughs> Is it a borrowed horse? Uh, no, no, we owned a horse for a while. Mm. Yeah, he just uh, wasn't well trained and I wasn't a good horse trainer. Oh. So, uh, this is all poplar uh, paneling in here. It all came off the property. The cabinets are all cherry and uh, they were bought locally from uh, a sawmill and I, I did all the work uh, of constructing. Very nice. We've got a little pantry and utility room here in between two buttress walls. This is a 16 inch thick buttress wall and another one on the other end of this pantry. Uh, washing machine, utility room, and uh, food storage. Poplar lined hallway leading to a sassafras lined bathroom. <laughs> and uh, we're on gravity fed. We're fortunate enough to have a spring that feeds uh, spring water to us by gravity, no pumps or electricity needed. Um, I also designed and built a septic system, don't tell the health department. <laughs> and I'm sorry, but we're in kind of a mess here. We're changing, today's the sheet changing day, so. We just changed our sheets today too, so. <laughs> so the bed's not made, the sheets are on the line, and you know, but uh, don't look at the bed. <laughs> <laughs> But I think we got a little better when we were slip form, and I think this is one of our most attractive walls. The flint rock uh, offsets the limestone. Some of them look like little murals to me almost. But uh, mm -hmm. we're, we're standing below grade here. The ground level is just below that window and slopes up on the side uh, walls uh, up to the top of it. Uh, this is a walnut that came off the property. The cedar uh, on the one east facing window there, you get an idea how thick the wall is there. But the, the cedar for that and the cedar for this chest of drawers uh, was a tree that fell on the property. And um, let's see, uh, nighttime insulation. South facing windows are a great way to uh, get heat in during the winter time, but then at night, big windows are a good way to lose heat. So I came up with this design to use an insulating uh, reflectix material that uh, I made these thermal shades to keep the heat in at night. And I've got commercial uh, uh, insulated shades. They're a cellular shade for the upper windows. And they're uh, room darkening, so the moon doesn't shine in on this. And a whole house fan helps keep it cooler summer nights. You can just draw cool air right through the whole house. We'll open the door and, and have the, uh, the fan just on low and draw air through the whole house. Mm. Want to go see the attached greenhouse? Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> oh, did we get me back to the hours? It's in the car. We didn't, we didn't have a chance to watch.